Hello, welcome back. Um, if you're looking for a free playground environment for your DevOps testing or just trying out code, then have you ever heard of Google Cloud Shell? This is what we're going to have a look at today. We've got fully kind of uh, a full environment ready to go that uses containers, but it's like a six node setup with an Ansible control node. You don't have to use it for that, but it's a free completely free playground to use. And I'm going to show you how to set it up in Google Cloud Shell. So if you've got a Gmail account, this is free. There's nothing else you need to do. You get like 50 hours a month. It resets once a month. You go again. VM comes with five gig of home drive storage, so you can keep all of your stuff safe. Um, you also get about eight gig of RAM. That, that's what I can see. Um, I've heard you might be able to change that, but at the moment, that's what I'm using. Um, it comes with lots of different APIs, different applications, stuff is hooked into this, you know, so if you go a little bit deeper and there's some, I've got some pages here about how it works, how the storage works, all the selections, you've got how to guides, they've got free training courses, you've got some limitations and restrictions about uh, if your session is inactive for 20 minutes, it'll stop, uh, you have to be mindful of the ephemeral stuff and whether you've got that set or not, so there's loads of options. It's really good and um, what, what I'm going to show you today is just one part of that. So um, a friend of mine, James Spurin, set all of this up. He teaches this as part of his Ansible course and it's his, basically his Ansible environment that he's given out for free. He's open sourced it, anyone can use it, which is what we're going to do. This is his course. Um, you can see he's got 18,000 students and a pretty high, probably one of the highest rankings you can get on Udemy. So, you know, check it out. It's all fully contained. It's, it just covers every aspect of Ansible. So it's not promotion. Don't have to do this, but this is good. Okay, so everything that we're going to do today is in the cloud. Um, everything's in the. It's it's in the browser. There's no virtual box. There's no cloud VMs. Everything's here. Obviously, we're using Google's VMs, but that's that's free. We don't have to do anything. It's a very simple setup. Um, so as you see, you've got those links to how it works and some limitations. Um, so. To actually get here, you have to go to the dive into dive into com forward slash p forward slash playground to get to. I'll put all these links in the description. Um, so let's just go ahead and begin. So this is it. You just click on literally just click on open Google Cloud Shell. You have to be logged in. It might ask you to log in. Um, if you get anything, just say sort of skip uh, type the confirmation and then confirm. And that will start provisioning it. Now, I've noticed a couple of things just to help you out. It starts in ephemeral mode. There's probably a way to change this, but I haven't stopped it. So basically, it means it won't hold any of your data. So if you reboot, it's gone and it starts again. And for some conditions, that is exactly what you want. But for us today, we want to actually save what we're doing. So if we come in here and turn off ephemeral mode, that it disables it, and then it starts up a new session where it's going to save our home drive. So we've got that five gigs, it says. So here we are, so I'm logged in. Right, and now we go over to the sidebar and we just clone, follow these follow these steps here. You know, have a read of what it's doing. I've obviously read it. Go through this. I'm just gonna clone his resources. And we're gonna set up some SSH keys for us and the root user. So again, it's all done for us. It's, I love kind of pasting stuff that's easy. It means that I don't have to do it so much. So now we're going to just cd into the directory and instead of running the command he's got here I'm just going to change it because of that 20 minute timeout um, if you if you don't do something in this display every 20 minutes no matter what else you're doing it will disconnect and you'll have to reconnect and if you haven't set ephemeral mode it will lose all your data so I'm going to no hup which is basically put to the background the next command which is the docker compose up you know there may be other ways to do this but this is this is what I'm doing today. So I'm going to run this and I'm going to send it to the background. And then what we can do is we can tail that no no hub dot out and then that will tell us what it's doing, tail minus f, and it will follow it. Okay, and then as it pulls down different images, we'll see that coming to here. It does mean that we won't see this completion message here because we're looking at because that's coming out to the display, but we're looking at a log. Um, but we will know when it ends and we'll be able to then disconnect our tail and then start up the session and use all of the wonderful stuff that's been generated for us. So this is just going to run. I'm going to leave this for a second.
Okay, so now we can see that it's creating this portal and that's done, that's the bit we need. So now we can come out of here. So once that's finished, before we then set up what we're doing next, um, it's important that we run command of choice. I'm using the watch command and I'm running a DF. So every two seconds, the DF will refresh the page. This means that we don't hit that 20 minute minimum time. It just carries on, it thinks it's in use. Um, if you don't have that and you then go into your cloud shell and you start using all your stuff, you'll find that you'll get disconnected and you'll find, oh, why have I been disconnected? And it's, it's for this reason. And then the next part is to access the portal, click the web preview icon, which is this one, and then preview on port 8080. Just click on that, it opens up another browser page. We can see it's working, we're now, we've now got um, the web page that we're looking for. You can see that we've got the Ubuntu C host and then we've got these other hosts running on different ports. So let's just click on here, it can open up another browser. And from here, we can just use the Ansible and password. That's the Ansible password, and now we're on. Lovely. Right, so we now have a control node that we're going to, we can run either Ansible from or anything else from. So there's a couple of things I want to do first. So firstly, let's make the Ansible directory. Now this is just my setup. You can now stop and you're away, no problem. Um, all I ask is that you subscribe to the channel. If you like this sort of content and you want to see more of it, subscribe to the channel, you get a notification. You can check out the videos. And CD to Ansible. So we're going to um, add to this Ansible.cfg file. If you don't know what I'm doing, then I'll take that course in Ansible here, the Dive into Ansible course, and you're going to know all of this and then a whole load more. So, so defaults, and the default we're going to pick is host key checking equals false. So whenever you log into an SS, uh, via SSH <coughs> into a VM for the first time, you always get this message that you have to answer yes to. It's called host key checking. Um, I don't want to do that. I want Ansible just to be able to connect without having to answer that. So this is what we set to make that happen. And then the next one is to vi host.any file. And then in this file, I'm just going to list Ubuntu 123 and CentOS 123. That's it, nice and simple. So now that we've set up Ansible configuration file and the host.any file, let's do some Ansible CLI to connect to those servers and just run a command. So Ansible minus I hosts.ini and then all, because we want to run it on everything in there, minus M shell, minus A, and let's just do a simple uptime command. <coughs> it's hopefully will connect all servers using our key. There it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so we're connected. Now obviously those uptimes are the same because it's there's only one underlying machine and that's what we're seeing. So that's why it, it looks the same. But we can also do this in a for loop. So you can use conventional Linux if you don't, you're don't using Ansible. You can still utilize the key using normal Linux commands. So for i in and then cat this host.ini file. Do echo dollar i. Done. So if, when I do a loop, I just want to loop it and echo what's in the in the loop, so that I know it's the right stuff. And now we're going to do we're going to SSH to dollar i, and we're going to run the uptime command. So this is exactly what Ansible did, but doing it with Linux commands. Okay, so we've got the same thing. There we go. If you want to, you can add the echo back in if you want to know which server it's on. There we go. So you can see it, and it looks very, very similar to this output. Um, and that's pretty much it. You're now set up. You can get to any of these servers. You can SSH onto any of these using your keys. So let's go to let's go to CentOS one, and we're on. You know, so come out of this. I think if we sudo to root, if I do that. I can. Can I get to one? That would be handy if I can. CentOS one. Yes, yes, okay, so you can SU as root as well. Okay, so one last thing I quickly wanted to cover was the ephemeral side. So we're gonna leave this here. I'm just gonna exit out of this. Okay, that's gone, kill that, it's fine. And then back in the cloud shell, we're gonna stop our watch command. Um, <coughs> in our home directory, Let's just touch um, 
Dennis. Lovely. You can see that Dennis is there. VI Dennis. Hello. Let's hit save that. Okay, so now because we're ephemeral, that should be saved. I'm going to exit out of this and I am going to close it down. Close that down. Start up another session. Just start it again so it's all fresh. We're going to open up the Cloud Shell. We're going to trust the repos again. See, it's provisioning the Cloud Shell machine. So this is all new again. It's just starting up a new session. If it comes in ephemeral mode, so now if we just have a look at what we've got, we can see that. My, my Dennis isn't there. It's not there. Neither is the directory that we cloned down. So if we come back over here and go disable ephemeral mode, this will then restart um, the Cloud Shell environment, put our home drive back. So if anyone knows how to do this, just tell me what it is and I'll, I'll get it set up and I'll, I'll add on to the video. Now we've set ephemeral up. We can see that we're back here. We've got our, our lab environment. We've got Dennis. If we kept Dennis. You can see that I said hello. And then you can just start up your environment in exactly the same way we did before and you'll be good to go. That's it. Simple as that. So enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, do me a favor. That really helps. And yeah, come back and see me in the next video. Take it easy. Bye.